Hey my friends, Will Taylor here. Obviously you're one of my Facebook friends. I'm in a beautiful house sitting situation, Travis Heights in Austin, Texas. And I wanna tell you about a really exciting show that, I've, that I'm creating that's really in the tradition of what I used to do 20, 25 years ago with strings attached at St. David's Church. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you what it's about right now. You can't find it on my website yet. But if you go search the O4 Center in Austin, Texas, and scroll down, you'll see on August 26th, I'll be doing something called The Living Score and featuring the music of Beethoven. So imagine if we were to combine a very casual chamber music concert and we added in some spoken word elements, some poetry, some short stories, some letters about Beethoven, or actually letters that Beethoven wrote that give you a deeper look and it, uh, di or a deeper dive into his, his life and his music. How would you feel that music? And if it was a live performance, wouldn't that be exciting? Imagine a uh, spoken word and then having either no music behind that spoken word or, or after the spoken word immediately going into a piece of Beethoven so that you're just sucked into his world in this oral environment. Imagine it being in a beautiful space, but, but that space wouldn't feel like formal, like if you're going to a symphony. And imagine if you could, if you had questions or things that you wanted to share back during that experience that at the end of the show, there would be a period where the audience could come forward and share back their experience or ask questions about the artist so that it's not just like artists being up on stage and there's a separation between artist and audience, but it's more like a conversation. So imagine if you took something like NPR's uh, The Moth or Selected Shorts, if any of you have heard those shows. You took a little bit of that and you added live music, live musicians. Maybe there was an element of theater, of, of comedy improv, or, or uh, uh, in, improvising music behind the text. All of these things are, are what I'm gonna experiment with the living score. And so if you wanna get tickets, uh, in a minute here, I'm gonna tell you, give you more background how I came upon this idea. But for those of you that are short on time, if you wanna get tickets, go to 04 Center, Dot com or go to Google and search for the O4 Center and then scroll down and you'll see there it says Will Taylor's The Living Score. And Melissa, you're watching and you know what, <laughs> Melissa, this would be something you would probably do, right? Because you have um, theater experience and voice acting and this is what I wanna do. I wanna get a voice actor. Um, I have voice, I have somebody that I've, that I've got on board um, uh, Megan Weaver, who's um, a, a theater director and an actor, who's going to do our first show on August 26th. And I have a real string trio. We'll be performing Beethoven's uh, third string trio in C minor. And I've been researching what happened in his life during that time. And it's really cool because he's got these letters to a guy named Amenda, who was a very talented violinist and it was a very close confidant of Beethoven. They had a really close relationship, two men. What was really interesting to me is um, just hearing about, you know, Beethoven having this guy friend, you know, and just how loving he was toward this guy and how he, he just expressed so much of how important he was to his life and the adventures that they had together. And it makes me think that like, even Beethoven found time to have friendships and have adventures and look at all the music that he produced without an aid of a computer. Did this all by hand. Very inspiring. So the, the goal of this experience, of this concert experience at the O4 Center is to bring to life these letters with a voice actor, with live music. And I'm hoping that you'll come and I'm hoping that you'll talk about it and pass the word. This is the first time that we're gonna try this. I would almost say that it's kind of like a workshop. It's kind of like workshopping the idea. Uh, again, go to Google, type in O4 Center, go to that website, scroll down, and you can get tickets there. And I'm gonna go over here and tell you a little bit about the story, but for those of you that have been following me for the last couple of years, you know that I've been mainly doing indoor performances. So how did I come upon this idea? Well, let me give you, I'm gonna go to the computer. 
And I'm gonna actually, first of all, I'm gonna read you something that was written about me about 20 years ago. Imagine what might happen if you dared to blur all these boundaries between pop music and jazz, between rock music and classical music, between the musical realm and the lyrical realm, between the honky tonk and the church and the spirit of art and fun and experimentation, you reached out for something transcendent, something more. And that's uh, Brad Buchholz wrote a long feature on what I did with Strings Attached in the year 2002. And it's kind of sounding a little bit like what I'm creating right now, you know, which is, which is reaching out for something different, something novel, something that hasn't been created before. Um, and this is in a, uh, what used to be a church that was built in the 60s. And when, we, when I started doing Strings Attached, we did it at St. David's Episcopal Church. Let me turn this around. I'm going to show you some of the... So here's uh, one of the concerts at the church. And here are some of the other places. So here's St. David's Church. Here's Carolyn Wonderland performing our blues show at St. David's. There's Eliza Gilkison. There's what the sanctuary looked like. There's James McMurtry in 2004. We did a show with him. Here's a large group of people that did our White Album show. Here's Wendy Colonna on our um, Zeppelin show. Here I am on the Zeppelin show in 2006. Uh, what else do I have? Let's see. Here's some other shows. Here's me with Sean Colvin, 2004. And I was going to show you a little bit of that Sean Colvin show right here. This is 2004. And let me make that full screen. Give you a little background. This is 2004. It's oh, where I want to be. Pick me up and turn me around. I come home. I'm born with a weak heart. I guess. So, this is a bit of a long form exclamation explanation of how I came to this idea. This is the long form part, but if you want to get the tickets, go to o4center.com or Google o4center and you can get the the first uh, the tickets for the living score. So that was Sean Colvin performing in the church. And my vision back then in 1999, going to St. David's Church was like, wow, this is a beautiful space. Why not bring pop musicians, jazz musicians, do strings attached? And my idea was to take their music and recreate it with classical level composition and arranging and present it as kind of a crossover. The same thing that Beethoven did with his um, with his his music. You know, he combined jazz and musical theater and, and, and then he was informed by music going all the way back to the beginning of music. Uh, classical music, Beethoven, all those people brought all that together. So I, I took the, the, the spirit of that and created that here in Austin. It was something very special. And I've always wanted to like return to that and recreate that because I thought it was a great idea that I would never abandon, but I had to abandon it at some point because I lost a lot of support and couldn't keep doing it. So I've rebuilt myself in doing more, more simpler productions like Strings in the Woods, where I go out with musicians without any production, just, just the musicians and their instruments. And I've been doing that for now five years. Well, I went to Santa Fe to take my Strings in the Woods project to the mountains. And in Santa Fe, well, I met other string musicians there because I'm planning on having kind of a, another life in Santa Fe. I'm building a community there. I found out about this thing called, about, it's called the Church of Beethoven. And they said that they're doing almost 60 performances a year and they're all sold out and people are really excited about them. And it was very similar to what I did in the church. But what they did was it was a, a service on Sunday mornings where it would be chamber music and spoken word and folks would have an espresso or some coffee and get together and there would be discussion about the music and it was very casual. It wasn't so formal like when you go to a formal classical concert. And these have been wildly successful in Albuquerque and Santa Fe. And there isn't anything like this in Austin. Nothing. Nothing. So I thought, why not create something like this, but in my own way in Austin? And I've been searching for a name. Some of the names that I've been, uh, let me see what I've got here. Let me show you. I was thinking of, uh, I can't find the name file. I'm kind of going around here. Um, but uh, anyway, I ran into, okay, well, let me back up a little bit. So imagine hearing like somebody like a performance poet 
you know, really perf performing with passion, you know, a poem uh, about Beethoven, or imagine hearing the Beethoven letters about the immortal beloved, or imagine sourcing local poets to, or, or short story writers to write material specific to the theme, whether it's a composer or a style of music, jazz, folk music, impressionism. Imagine writing music about paintings and then having writers write poems and letters or uh, stories about that and making performances and make this into a podcast. So I was inspired by the Church of Beethoven in, in Albuquerque to create something like this in Austin, but try to keep it still very simple. Like take what I did outside, which by the way, I've been doing outside. I've been reading poems. I've been reading essays and, and while the sun sets with live musical accompaniment and people love it. And I've been incorporating that into the meditation. Sometimes I'll go straight from the meditation right into a poem, which Tara Brock does. And I've always loved that idea. So, if you just join me, I'm, I'm announcing my, my new show idea called The Living Score. Um, so I thought, why not do this inside? Because everybody is going crazy with the triple heats out, hip, triple digits outside. So let me show you a little bit about this amazing venue. I started looking. I thought maybe we'll do this at galleries, like the Blanton Museum, which we could do, unconventional venues where we can play acoustic music. Keep, like I said, keep it simple, just like I have with Strings in the Woods. Simple production, acoustic music, just a spoken, one spoken word artist on one microphone. That would be the most production. But we could add beautiful lighting, add theatrical elements to it. And I found this place called the O4 Center. And you're not going to believe it's so much like what I used to do at St. David's. So this is the O4 Center. And let me show you some of the. This is uh, the light show, you can see. Sorry, I'm in vertical mode here. And it's been around since 2018. And they've had people like Sean Calden, a lot of the artists that I've worked with. And it's amazing production value, amazing lighting, amazing sound. The acoustics are great in there. That looks like Sarah Jarose. But look at this lighting that they have. Unbelievable, beautiful, <laughs> just gorgeous. So, uh, uh, it turns out that I know the one of the partners and I met with him and tested out the hall. And so we're doing our first uh, sort of show there to try this idea on August 26th, The Living Score. You can get tickets at the O4Center.com. It's not on any of my websites yet, but, uh, but I'll be announcing it. So imagine this poem. I'm researching uh, poems for Beethoven. And I came across this guy, Shane Coiz... Khoisan from Canada. And just his performance gives me goosebumps. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you just a little bit about it. And I've contacted him and I, I've got permission, but it's gonna cost me $150 for use fee. So I told him we'll, we'll wait to see what kind of tickets, what kind of the what the ticket sales turn out to be, and then we'll I'll get back to him. But maybe there's somebody out there in my audience that would like that would donate the $150 so we could do this poem. I'm gonna show you just a little bit of this, and it's spine tingling. Here is Shane, I'm gonna start at the top. Performance poet, you might say even a beat, slam poet, but check it out. Listen, his father made a habit out of hitting him. See, some men drink, some men yell, some men hit their children. This man did it all because I guess all men want their boys to be geniuses. Beethoven, little boy living in a house where a name meant nothing. Living in a house where mercy had to be earned. Through each perfect note tumbling up through the roof to tickle the toes of angels whose hearts couldn't hold half the passion that was held in the hands of a young boy who was hard of hearing. Beethoven, who heard his father's anthem every time he put finger to ivory, it was not good enough. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? Imagine somebody performing that poem and then immediately bringing up live string music. This, this is what I want to do. How profound that would be for everybody in the room to experience that. Imagine that performance poet and then going straight into some music by Beethoven to sort of hear that in the music, to hear this man's interpretation of Beethoven's life. It was never good enough. So, so this is my idea. Um, 
yeah, so that's my presentation. I think I presented it as best I can right now. And I'm going to read to you a little bit of the wording that I'm tossing around. So first of all, what's great about this venue is, is that it's indoors. Here's some selling points for you as a fan or somebody that is considering coming to a show. A lot of you don't want to go outside right now. My outdoor shows have completely basically gone off a cliff. I have moved them to Barton Springs. I'm going to tell you about a Barton Springs thing I'm doing coming up. But this gives you an option for an air-conditioned venue. There's tons of free parking. It's centrally located. There's a full bar for those guests that are 21 and over. Uh, all ages are welcome. Kids are welcome. Patrons can eat dinner at Matt's El Rancho, which is right next door to the O4 Center. So you can go and have dinner at 6 o'clock. And then you can come in at 7 o'clock, the doors open, 8 o'clock show. Uh, the venue holds up to 350 people. They have a choir loft. It's amazing. They're building a relationship with high production value with a lot of local artists. They've been doing this since 2018. The acoustics are amazing. And they are very artist-centered. They want the artist to be happy. So this is like my old formula being reborn in a new way. My old formula of doing shows at St. David's from 2000 to 2012 is, I see, is that how long it is? No, 2010, for 10 years, for a decade. And here's some of the wording I'm using. It's called Will Taylor's The Living Score Beethoven, featuring a live performance of the string trio number three in C minor, improvised music, spoken word with Beethoven's letters, poetry inspired by his music, and audience Q&A. Imagine a casual concert experience that takes you deep into the life and soul of the music and its creators. Something presented at an unconventional venue where guests can enjoy a glass of wine, acoustic music, and a few passionate spoken word recitations of poetry, letters, and short stories. Think of NPR's The Moth or Selected Shorts, but with live music and audience particip participation through Q&A and shares. Performers will include a string trio with my good friends Christabel Lynn and Tony Rogers, and spoken word with Megan Weaver. That's my basic description that I have right now. Um, and, you know, I want to draw in a little bit of history, like how did this idea came to come to be? Well, I was doing a lot of these elements in Strings in the Woods. I've brought in poetry into my uh, and into my meditations outside, and people were responding to it. Uh, the poetry of, of um, Mary Oliver, especially. But also, my dad is a poet, and I grew up around poetry readings as a kid. And, I, and my dad had a bookstore in Austin in the early 80s, and he would have poetry readings and jazz jam sessions, and there was a punk club in the basement called Voltaire's Basement, so I first went to my dad about this idea, and I want to involve him, but he doesn't want to do an indoor show just yet because of COVID. Also, my dad and I produced a collaborative recording called Bloodlines in 1990 that was his poetry and my music, and it was improvisations based on his poetry. So it's been simmering around a lot, and I'm really excited to Announce that right now. It's called The Living Score. The music of Beethoven will be featured at the first event on August 26th, and you can get tickets at the04center.com. You can Google that in, the 04 Center or 04 Center here in Austin. It's a beautiful location. I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited to announce that we'll be going indoors. And if this... Um, it's been getting a good response to those that have been talking about it, too. And if it seems like it's something that gets the support in the Austin community, then we may do this monthly. We'll see. Or seasonally. All right, so on to the, uh, the next thing that's going on this month is that I pivoted my outdoor Strings in the Woods shows to be called a new thing called Strings at the Springs. And if you're interested in coming to our next Strings at the Springs... This coming a week from today, August 21st, we're going to feature the music of the Beatles. Now, why did I call it Strings in the Springs? Because we're at Barton Springs, and it gives you an opportunity to still be outside for those that are still not comfortable with doing an indoor show with COVID. It gives you an option, my folks, to cool down 
and be outside and experience the close-knit sort of close proximity experience that you do when you have a like a song circle around a fire or you're or you're camping and you hear somebody take out a guitar and play music and you have that that special connection where you just remember that it's something about it just stays with you it stays in your long-term memory the sense memory of being under the stars of of the smell of the fire right of the, the you can feel the heat from the from the fire well this is the opposite you're going to jump in Desi, how you doing? You're gonna jump in the, the cool waters, you're gonna come back, you're gonna get on your towel, your yoga mat, and you're gonna hear the music of the Beatles, and you're gonna sing along with us, and you're gonna give us your, your remembrances, you're gonna share. I'm gonna also share a, a, a beautiful meditation to get you in a really calm place. And before that, I take you on a history tour of Barton Creek that I have curated just myself it lasts 30 minutes and i'll take you to some ruins from 1889 that many people don't know that are on barton creek right there around the barton springs area i will also show you a project that was created by the youth progress administration under fdr in 1937 it was built right next door to barton springs many of you don't even know this exists but still go to barton springs daily so that event is this coming Sunday, April 21st, Strings at the Springs, featuring the music of the Beatles. And I'm hoping that Leanne Atherton is going to be on that show with me. And I'm hoping that my daughter is going to be off work so she can come sing with me on that show. And I'll be announcing that as soon as I hear from them. But it's happening August 21st. And you can get tickets at austin.stringsinthewoods.com. And... That is everything I have to talk about musically related. Love every one of you. This has been my long form update to recap The Living Score, a new uh, show that I've created or that I'm creating with some great artists, including a spoken word theater director. Me Megan Weaver is premiering on August 26th and then August 21st, Music of the Beatles at Barton Springs. I hope to see you there. And you can Google all of those and find